kids, Chris Godinas, licensed professional counselor, also the host of We Need to Talk on every Sunday at noon. This video is for educational and informational purposes only. The views and opinions stated herein are mine and mine alone. They do not represent the ACA, the APA, or any other therapist for that matter. Boom shakalaka done. I'd like to thank my sponsor, BetterHelp. B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinas. They're an online therapy company. They are international. So if you are anywhere in the world, you can get to a therapist on betterhelp.com slash Chris Godinas. They do packages, which are really affordable. Um, they do online and they do chatting, which I think is amazing. They have therapists that are master's level and PhD level. So thank you, BetterHelp dot com slash Chris Godinas. Okay, so let's dive into the rest of the questions that I was unable to get to. Can you be stuck in a state of devaluation by the narc? Gaslit, triangulation, being blamed to punish, humiliate, won't take no for an answer. No, and I mean it doesn't work. They turn everything around. Uh, yeah, and if somebody doesn't respect no, and I mean it, then you get the hell out. You get the hell out. That, that is a disrespect. So no is a boundary word. And if somebody's crossing your boundary, it's time for you to be done. It is because the, they're constantly getting in your head and they're not respecting your boundary. They don't respect you. So yeah, absolutely. You can be stuck in that. That is what abuse is. Uh, especially if they turn everything around, if they're in denial, if they um, flip the script, if they do any of that, mm -mm, get out, get out, save yourself. All right, I try to watch therapy or you. Person here will backseat peanut gallery take over. So I can't hear what's being said. They say therapy, you trigger me and it doesn't help. Well, people who are unwilling to change generally come up with the excuse that, oh, I don't like therapy. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, it's a soft science or you know, oh, it doesn't, you know, it's it's not real, blah, blah, blah. Or, oh, it's triggering me. Instead of, let's get curious and find out why you're getting triggered. So be very cautious of anyone who prevents you from getting the help you want or need. And anyone who uh, refuses to let you get therapy or refuses to let you listen or whatever. So, yeah, be very cautious of people that do that. It's because they don't want you getting better, basically. Um, the narcissist can deny all the progress you make. Tell, they tell you how you worsen. Well, yeah, because you're not obeying them anymore. That's why. If anything, they focus on your negative and not your positives because narcs delight in the negative. It makes me sick. Yeah. So narcissists will very much get angry when the abused wakes up and realizes, oh, this is abuse. Oh, I'm not going to put up with it anymore. Oh, I am not going to put up with disrespect. Know what I mean it? Oh, look, you're not listening to that boundary. Goodbye. That's a deal breaker. That's a deal breaker. So write out your list of deal breakers. You know, no disrespect. Uh, not listening to boundaries, not respecting boundaries, calling you names, putting you down, keeping you from getting help, being intentionally disruptive when you're listening to something that can help you. So those are all red flags, huge, ginormous red flags. Those are all deal breakers. You know, once a person does that, don't give them a second chance. Be done. Be done. So yeah, when the target of abuse starts changing and not putting up with the abusers, you know, no. When they stop putting up with the abuser and their horse manure or cow manure, then they start going, oh, well, you know, you're, you're, you're changed. I don't like the way you're changing. I don't like, well, it's because you're not being manipulated anymore. They don't like that. They want you to stay manipulated. They want you to stay under their thumb, so to speak. So yeah, they don't like therapy because of that, because people do get better and they do learn how to get away. Um, all right. Uh, why can they not be happy for anything or anyone ever? Because they don't feel. So let's be clear. In order to feel happiness for somebody else, you have to feel, right? They don't feel. They don't feel happy. They don't. It's like they've got this very twisted sense of emotions. And they don't process the emotions the way that you and I do. They just don't. 
So they can't be happy for themselves, really, because it's always very fleeting. It's always very uh, superficial. Their, their emotions are very superficial. So they don't really feel anything deeply. And they can't be happy for another person because they're so wrapped up in the jealousy aspect of it. It's like, well, you have something I don't have. You're feeling something I don't feel. And then they get angry. And so they can't ever be happy because that's beyond them. They will never be happy for themselves. They'll never be happy for another person, ever. Healthy people are able to be happy for themselves and content and can look at another person and be happy for them because they're doing well, because we know what it's like. You know, it's like, oh my God, that is so cool that you got that scholarship and you're going to wherever you want to go. Or that's so cool that you got that promotion at work. That is so cool. Congratulations. And you're genuinely happy for them because you know what it feels like. Narcissists don't know what it feels like. They can't, they can't put themselves in the other person's shoes. So they are never happy. And it is never good enough. And it's always more, 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 I, 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 my genitals. They just, they're never satisfied. Ever, 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 ever. Um, it seems like they only think about their own interests. Yeah, because they're narcissists. Tell you to not have wants or needs. Yeah, because, oh, that angers them to the core. If you let them know, if it's a romantic relationship and you say, I need emotional intimacy. I need this kind of attention. I want this to be our relationship. And then they get angry instead of getting curious. A healthy person would get curious. Tell me more. What do you what do you mean? You know, how would you like to see that? How can we work together to make this relationship work? A narcissist will get angry and they they basically train their target of abuse to only be happy or or compliant, not necessarily happy. But a lot of kids growing up in an abusive family, that's how they had to be all the time. Like the fake, you know, propping the, the, the smile up and, oh, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Which in counselor's term, fine stands for effed up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. Well, yeah, in your family, everything was fine. Does that make sense? So they don't want the target of abuse to be a real person. They want a doll. They want a doll that they can manipulate, that they can move, that they can do whatever they want to and not have any consequences. When there's consequences, i.e. emotions involved, the abuser gets very angry. How dare you have wants and needs? Because seriously, they look at us as an object. We have no more meaning to them than this pen. And if this pen runs out of ink, the narcissist tosses it gets rid of it, finds a new one. That's what they do. So they get angry if the object, the target of abuse, has actual wants and needs or emotions. It makes them angry. Because how dare you ask me of something? How dare you have a, a need from me? I can't give it to you and I'm not going to give it to you and I don't want to give it to you and I don't even understand what you want. So I'm gonna now punish you for having a want, need or an emotion. That's how they operate, guys. They're, they're evil. They're evil. They're just evil. They don't feel. They don't love. They don't understand emotions. They get jealous. Uh, they get angry when somebody wants or needs something that they, they can't even understand or give or have. And instead of getting curious and figuring out what is wrong with them, they flip the script and it's you, 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 you guns. You're the problem. You want too much. You you need too much. You're too this. You're too that. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. The second somebody does that, you kick their hind end to the curb. So... There is that. Um, yeah, they want an absolute mirror of themselves. They want you to be compliant. They don't want your opinion. Yeah, my father used to say things like, if I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. He wasn't kidding. He wasn't kidding. Things said in jest are very often meant. So watch how they joke. If it's disrespectful, if it's snarky, if it's nasty, if it's, you know, this kind of, if I want your opinion, I'll give it to you. They're not lying. They're, they're telling the truth. They're, they're calling themselves out. And they're stupid enough to do that if you're smart enough to listen to it or if you're trained enough to listen to it. Not that you're not smart, but once we recognize how these abusers act and how they do and their patterns, you can hear it. You know, people... People call themselves out all the time. Narcissists call themselves out all the time. You know, my dad also used to say, I'm, I'm not wrong. I'm only temporarily confused. 
uh, dude, <laughs> you know? So they're telling you their worst fear is being wrong, or they're letting you know they, you know, if they want you to speak up, they'll tell you what to think. So listen to what they say. Listen to how they say it. Listen to the disrespect. And then get out if they're disrespectful. If they're disrespectful, there's no relationship there. There's no hope. There's no hope. If there's no relation, if there's no respect, there's no hope. So there is that. Um, and yes, they want a mirror of them. They want somebody who's just this doll, this mannequin that can mirror back to them what they want to hear. And that goes for male and female. So there that is. Um, okay, you said they are not always who they say they are. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he lied to gain my interest. As you said that, my red flags popped up again. What if you married a liar knowingly? Well, here's the thing, guys. Be gentle with you. Because <laughs> abusers are con artists, male and female. They are con artists. And they study their target of abuse to find out exactly what they want, exactly what they need, and then they present it as if it was real. And then eventually the mask slips and the lies come flying out. And the the they're no longer able to cover the lies anymore. They've told too many lies. And then you realize, oh my God, this is not who I thought they were. That is common. So don't beat yourself up. It's just once you recognize it, get out. Especially if the other person is unwilling to get help. If they're unwilling to go see a therapist on their own, don't go to couples counseling with them. Do not. What they will do is if you go to couples counseling with them, they'll try to pick a therapist that doesn't know their a-hole from a hole in the ground, or they'll pick somebody who's brand new, or they'll pick somebody who sides with them, who's possibly a narcissist themselves, and they'll take whatever you say in therapy and use it against you. You know, if they're interested in going to get their own therapy and work on themselves, great. Then maybe there's a chance. But here's the big caveat. Here's the big but. What I've seen narcissists and dark triads do is they'll go to therapy on their own one to three times. And because they're pathological liars, they'll continue to lie about continuing to go or they'll lie about what the therapist is actually telling them. So once trust has been broken... It is insanely hard to get it back. And if they're lying about big things and they're trying to keep you from getting help or they're trying to keep you from peace out because they're lying about so much stuff, get out. Save yourself. You can't fix them. You cannot fix them because you did not break them. So be gentle with you. You know, a lot of us do get involved and marry sometimes these abusers you know, thinking we've gotten one thing when in fact we, we have another. And so that's very common. My hair is doing the Watusi without me. Um, that's very common. So don't beat yourself up. It's, it's the, it really pays to take your time before you marry. It's like, don't rush into anything. That would be the biggest advice. If somebody came up to me and said, Chris, what is the biggest piece of relationship advice you can give? I would say this, have your list of deal breakers. If they cross even one of them, they are out of the game. Out, done, period. Um, take your time. You know, this is all part of healthy relationships. You take your time. You see them in different situations, you know. Take your time so that you can see how, they, how do they react when you travel, okay? That'll tell you a lot about a person. How do they react at family gatherings? How do they react at weddings? How do they react at funerals? How do they react when it's not all about them? You know, how is that going to go? And uh, do they try to isolate? You know, it's like, have your list of deal breakers. That's the number one thing. Have your list of deal breakers and then take your time. Don't rush into anything. A lot of us rushed headlong into these relationships because the abuser pushed it along because they presented one way and they wanted to be with us and they did the oxytocin thing and got us addicted to them and you know did the and we're lying you know and all of that and then by the time we figure it out we feel trapped you're not trapped you're not trapped you can always get out of the relationship you can it may take some doing, you may need some support, you may have to ask for help, but, and you can get out. 
you absolutely can get out. So I really strongly recommend um, <clears throat> if you're in a situation where you realize that your partner is a pathological liar and you're married to them and it's going to have to be a divorce, get the No-Nonsense Guide to Divorce by Lori Hellis. Read Splitting by Bill Eddy and Randy Krieger. Get an attorney who understands high conflict divorces and get out. Save yourself. They're not going to get better. If they refuse therapy, if they make fun of therapy, if they don't like therapists, if they're, you know, oh, this is a soft science and blah, 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 blah. It doesn't work. Blah, 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 blah. Mm, nope. They're, they're, they've told you who they are. Believe them the first time. So get out. Save yourself. That would be my advice for that. All right, kids. So. Um, we are going to do a shortened show next week. So I'm going to talk about movies and TV shows that have absolutely given the wrong message. And, um, I want to talk about how that impacts us and how that impacts young minds. And it's not just movies and TV shows. It's these romance novels. It's these, you know, things where it's like, oh, you can save the bad boy or whatever. And no, you can't. So so we're going to talk about movies and TV shows that have absolutely given the wrong message. Why? What's the theme? What do I see on a psychological level, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It is going to be a shortened show. I'm not sure it's going to be an entire hour. But um, so I will be broadcasting from Universal Studios because I'm going there on vacation with La Familia. So anyway, that's that. And I will take time out to do that because I, I sometimes I watch TV and I want to throw things at the television because I'm just like, oh, my God, who wrote this? Go lie on a couch and talk to somebody about your mother. So anyway, there's that. All right, guys, I will talk to you on Sunday at noon. It'll be a shortened show. It'll probably be about a half hour, 45 minutes round in there. All right, guys, talk to you later. Have a great week. Bye.